positive it was because of that first visit, and one of them is one of his front teeth. Oh. He doesn't have great coverage, so it's not like he can get it fixed, and now he's just going to be missing three teeth. And I was wondering if he knew anything that we could do or any way I could help him. Well, first of all, the, the, the medical professionals are governed uh, by uh, a statute that applies to uh, medical professionals, and a dentist is one of them. So a dentist is liable, assuming he acted or she acted, be below the standard of care. So you have a witness, another dentist, an expert, who it sounds like may well testify that what the first dentist was wrong. Uh, so if that's correct, you, you have a basis for a malpractice suit. Uh, what, what that means is you're going to end up, you have, to, you have to send a letter to the uh, dentist uh, 90 days before you're going to sue him, advise him of what the problems are. That probably should be done by a lawyer. Uh, and thereafter, you can then sue, assuming you sue within a statute of limitations. The limitations of this uh, medical statute for damages is for pain and suffering. Now, most people do not like to go to dentist. I mean, I, I'm one of them. I mean, I, I, I break out in the sweats when I'm within three miles of my wonderful dentist office. Two miles, I'm <laughs> dripping wet. Uh, I mean, I'm crying like a baby when I walk in there. And I'm sitting there going, no, no, just tell me I don't need anything. I don't need x-rays. You're just here to tell me I'm a good person. Well, mo uh, there are lots of people who are like that. I mean, we're all dental chickens, I guess. So um, for whatever pain and suffering uh, your uh, uncle had, the maximum he could recover is $250,000 for pain and suffering. He can also recover for what it costs to repair the damage, which would be uh, the front teeth, the back teeth, whatever, what's ever necessary. And then any, any kind of lost wages he may lose, like if he's a salesman and he can't make sales because his front teeth are out, he's losing income, or he shows up at the door and people are laughing at him, and, he, and he's in kind of some, some kind of sales, and he doesn't make money. But there is a suit here, and I think you ought to take uh, your Uncle Sam uh, to an attorney, Uncle Sam. Yes. Tax time. Yes, yes. Um, Great job, Stephen. And, uh, and, and have a lawyer take a look at the, the dental records, talk to the uh, other dentist, and then decide whether or not it's economically viable for your uncle to file suit and whether a lawyer will take it or not. Is there a specific kind of lawyer that I need to go to? It, it's there, there are lawyers who do many, many uh, dental malpractice cases. In fact, I, I know of, uh, in our, in our uh, history of practicing law, I know of some dentists who also have law degrees, and that's, how, and that's what their I mean, practice I mean, is. Doctor and dental D Dentists who also have law degrees. Okay. All right. And, they, and they, their practice is suing or defending dentists. So, yes, there are lawyers out there who do just about nothing but that. And then there are a lot of fine lawyers that do uh, medical and dental and other kind of medical professional malpractice, and they're excellent, too. Uh, if you have any difficulty, uh, you can call the L L.A. County Bar Association. Uh, you're in Culver City. There's also the Culver City Bar Association, and they may give you a reference. The L.A. County Bar will give you uh, two or three people in your area, uh, and those are good ways to go. Sometimes a good way to go is also go to Google and see what kind of lawyers put up uh, attorneys' dental malpractice, and you can see uh, what kind of lawyers show up. Uh, it's not an area of specialization by the state bar, but, you know, lots of things get written about it. So there are lots of ways to find a lawyer in this area. Okay, well, awesome. Okay, Beverly. But uh, tell, your, tell your uncle we're sorry for him, and uh, uh, he, should, he needs to get his, feet, his teeth fixed. He needs to probably make, see a lawyer, and you need to do it right away. Yeah, sooner rather than later, like tomorrow or the next day at the latest. And, you know, the pain... You I will. Know, I'll call as soon as I'm off with you guys. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Okay, wow. thanks, Beverly. Thanks for calling Legal Help Live. Well, the pain of dent dental problems, and, and, and you go to someone and hope they're going to make it better. Now, there are no guarantors... That was a pretty simple thing, too. I mean, the well, guy's well, who filling that, comes out, and the next thing he well, knows is Well, but it may teeth. well be that filling comes out, there is cavity in the filling... They x-ray the area. They see that there's wisdom teeth impacted. 
he starts to have pain with the wisdom teeth. Yes. He goes to the next dentist. Right. And uh, it may not have been the dentist's fault at all. You Except don't know. Except the first, the second dentist said it. He thought it was the first dentist's well, fault. So I mean, that, that, that's a big. That could be a big part of the case. There's also there's a lot between what's what we're hearing now. What may really have happened? There were probably X-rays taken. Right. Uh, there's probably. And then there was that fall he took and he hit his face. You the never curb. know. One eight hundred four zero five four two two two. But I tell you, my, I just, I, I, just opening my mouth near a dental office puts me in hysteria. And you know, I, I go to my dentist and he says, "You want Novocaine?" I said, "No, don't need it." Well, you're you're, you're stoic. Or but there, there, I'm sure there's a word for but it. But I, I say know if stoic I say that else. about oxes too. So you know, <laughs> you guys, you have a stoic ox. <laughs> so yes. So what's happening in the law these days, Mr. Solomon? Well, uh, I don't know if you, those of you who, who uh, follow, who are young enough to follow, or old enough, or uh, musicians enough to follow the Coachella scene. Oh yeah. But I, I thought that this is the three-day music festival down in Indio, California. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems, from what I read, uh, that it was much better control this time of the entire problem. Uh, there weren't that many uh, yeah. problems. Although I, I read this morning that there were 92 arrests for. The weekend for yeah, drug there offenses. Are tens of thousands of people. Yeah, probably sixty to seventy to yeah, eighty thousand people. Yeah. So you know, less than a hundred arrests. Pretty good situation. Doesn't sound so bad. Also, sounded like the security was pretty darn good this year. I know I had uh, one of my sons and his friends go, and they had came back, and they were wearing their their uh, wristbands with an electronic chip in it. That's pretty cool. It really sounded like a, a neat. So control. now the the uh, the people who put the bands on on your son's wrist know where he is. At all times. Well, we, they, and maybe, you know, it's a good idea? Parents to have their kids with wrists. Uh, well, I just got back from China, and they probably know where I'm at every minute since I've been there, you know. Okay, uh, if, you're, if, if you're watching from Beijing, this is Mr. Solomon here. Don't forget that I did that not part. say a word any place I you went. You were very to. civil. You were very polite. And I, and I was treated uh, immensely, uh, appropriately, but I felt like the old Jack, Jack Webb dragnet things were... Car 51, is that what it was? 51? Uh, that was car 54. Car 54 was following me every place I went. <laughs> a little paranoid, huh? Do you know the whole... Mouth problems and paranoia. Okay, I'm, I'm going to give you a break. I'm not going to sing you the song for car 54. So we I have, can do it and I won't. We have lots of sports legal things going, which I thought were... Yeah, what's happening, what's, what's happening with... Uh, well, there, there are a number of things. Well, the one that I thought was very interesting is that that great track star, Carl Lewis. Yes. Um... I uh, was running for New Jersey State Senate. Running S still for, running, yeah. Still running for New Jersey State Senate. And, he, and, and as of uh, last night or early this morning, he was ruled ineligible because he was not living, allegedly, as a New Jersey resident. Oh, I knew he was running. I didn't and hear that. And therefore could not run. He couldn't run, uh, so he's disqualified. Now, whether that's going to get overruled or not, I don't know. But here's an Olympic gold medal winner who... Was he jumping the gun? Who... <laughs> All his life is running, and now they won't let him run for political office. That's too bad. That's and, a, and allegedly, he has a, a house and everything in New Jersey, so I thought that was interesting. But I wonder about that. You know, Rahm Emanuel, who, uh, who's now the mayor, or shortly to be the mayor of uh, Chicago, there's questions concerning his residency, too. But apparently, the courts resolved that in, in uh, Illinois to his favor. Yeah, well, but it, so that, 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 there's our sports situation. Our sports situation. Is. Well, how about the NFL? I, mean, that's I, I don't the, understand any of those legal problems. Well, either. apparently the owners locked out the players because the because they're anticipating uh, a break in the negotiations. So they locked the locker rooms. So they locked they, the they locked them out of the locker rooms. Took the rooms. trainers out of there. Right, and, and the players. And no. now, do they have to pay them when there's a lockout? Well, it's more than that. Uh, let's see. Uh, two days ago, no, you know, before you get there, there's a lockout. There's a lockout. So no, they, they're not being paid. If so there's not, a lockout, they don't get paid. They don't paid. get paid. No, and we're talking. You know, we're not talking about fifty cents an hour. These guys get. These so guys I'm get making. Money. I'm making five hundred thousand a game. Yeah. And I can't get paid. Uh, you, you're not being paid. That's correct. You're losing a proportion for your an, from your annual salary. But so I need to get a job at Bell. I wouldn't do that. U.S. District Court Judge Susan Richard Nelson granted the NFL players a TRO. That is, I'm sorry, a preliminary injunction that allows them back into the locker room and whatever else they're going to do. And we're going to have to take a break. But when we come back, we'll be talking to you. Call us at 1-800-405-4222, and we'll see you in a moment. 
Stay tuned for more Legal Help Live.